Well, you know, um, to to quote Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> okay, you know, we're okay. going there. We're gonna go All there, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I like the joke. I, yeah. I use the joke a lot. Um, we know uh, he has a famous song. Okay, do you remember the name of his song? I like big. Yep. Okay. Yep. I so remember. that's yeah. exactly what you don't do when you are apologizing. Okay. Uh, we want to keep the butts out of the apology. Okay. Okay. It's inevitable in life that at some point, someone's gonna disappoint us, they may hurt us, they may offend us, and they owe us an apology. Sometimes it's us offending them. But the question is, how do we really know that we've apologized appropriately? Well, in today's conversation, we're gonna find out exactly how you can know if you've apologized the right way, or if someone's apologized to you in a correct fashion. I'm glad to be joined by my friend, family member. Yes, uh, brother. Brother, anything you can say. Another, <laughs> another Kevin. Yeah. Kevin another Copeland. KJ. Another KJ. That's right, Kevin Joel Copeland. Yeah. Welcome to my podcast, my show. I, I know we had a conversation many months ago where we were talking about something to do politically, and yeah. it was a, a an issue with an apology. Yeah. And you brought something up, and ever since then, we knew we needed to have this conversation. Yeah. So first of all, welcome to Thank the show. You. Glad uh, to be welcome here. to my podcast. Um, before we get into it, because I, I like to make sure that we've got the right people giving the right information, and right. I know you've got credentials to back up. This is not just me flapping my gums, but I want to just open it up. First of all, let you introduce yourself to the people. Okay. And uh, let's just go from there. Well, uh, thanks for having me on the show, by the way. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm a registered psychotherapist here in uh, Toronto. And um, so I've been a psychotherapist for seven years now. Mm -hmm. And um, I pastored uh, in many churches before that. And uh, yeah, I, I came across this material actually through um, a guy named Gary Chapman, who uh, wrote a very famous book called The Five Love Languages. But then he also followed that up by talking about an apology language. And mm -hmm. so the material is really important and I use it a lot with my couples because mm -hmm. my main practice is actually working with couples um, mm -hmm. through the repair process when they have offended or hurt each other so to get past that trauma you have to have a good repair absolutely absolutely yeah. so yeah like you said you know we were, we were we were talking in the backyard and um i really wanted to dive in into that for those that have not heard of these and i believe there's five r's the five r's and right. the way you broke it down i know you're you were referencing uh, mr chapman's material yeah um but the way you broke it down was amazing to me and i thought okay we have to do a show right. on that Right. Um, so let's start off real quick with maybe high level. What are the five R's? Okay. So I, I've told this a million times. I love, I love the material. And uh, I'll just say, I take a little bit of a different approach to it than the way Gary Chapman did. Okay. So he makes it sound, well, he's written it and, and presented it as if it's like five different personalities or five different languages. I like to think of it more like a big chili pot, okay? Okay. And we have to have these ingredients in the chili in order for the chili <laughs> to taste good, okay? Right. Yeah. And so he um, he talks about first uh, expressing regret. Yeah. Accepting responsibility would be the second one. Uh, the third one is making restitution. Mm -hmm. Then genuine repentance. And then the, the last one is requesting forgiveness. Right, okay. And so... When, like I said, when we, when I first heard that, I, I had to take a, a step back and I was like, wow, okay, yeah. like, I like the way, because it's simple, right? And that's yeah. what I think people need these days, just yes. a simple formula that right. they can remember um, to, to kind of walk through those steps of apologies. Um, and so if we could start talking a little bit more in depth about each one of sure. those, right? Absolutely. So for example, yeah. so the first one was regret. regret. So if, let's say, for example, if I've offended somebody, yeah. right? 
And I wanted to issue an apology to that person. And we, yeah. and we, and the first one you said was regret. Mm -hmm. How do I express regret mm -hmm. in a proper apology right. to somebody? Right. Well, I, I think our pride often gets in the way. I'll say mm -hmm. this. So when we are apologizing, we really want to lay our, our pride aside for mm -hmm. the moment. Right. Right. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on too, talking about some of the hindrances and the barriers to mm -hmm. that. But when you are expressing regret, first you have to be really specific about what you're talking about. Okay. Like a simple, I'm sorry, really doesn't cut it. Okay. And it's kind of like the word love. You know, we use love, the word love. To, I love spaghetti and I love my grandma and I love you and I love, <laughs> you know, I love this singer. But right. so th it can kind of, the value of it can get very watered down with overuse. Right. So I think when we're talking about I'm being... I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you want to be absolutely specific about what it is that you did mm -hmm. so that you let the other person know that you've offended or hurt, right. that you know what it is. Right. Um, I see this an awful lot in practice. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a guy or a girl thing, but mm -hmm. generally it's more the guys than the girls, okay? Yeah. Generally. The, the guy will say, I'm sorry. And then the girl will say, okay, what are you sorry for? And he's like, he's a deer in a headlights, right? <laughs> Frozen. It's like, uh, I thought yeah. that this was going to just make it all go away, but it never does. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very specific about, I regret mm -hmm. first what I did. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, how it impacted you. So, so the first one is to have regret. Express regret. Express yeah. regret. And then the second one is to accept, accept responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. Okay. And then so how, how would I, if I was apologizing to somebody, how do I um, accept responsibility? What would that right. kind of look like? You well, think? you know, um, to, to quote Sir Mix a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're okay. going there. We're going to go All there, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the joke. I, yeah. I use the joke a lot. Um, we know uh, he has a famous song. Okay. Do you remember the name of his song? I like big. Yep. Okay. Yep. I so remember. that's yeah. exactly what you don't do when you are apologizing. Okay. Uh, we want to keep the butts out of the apology. Okay. Okay. And when you, so if I was to say to you, Kev, man, I'm really sorry that um, I may, that I hurt you. I made fun of your, um, your, your lasagna. Mm -hmm. You know, I really hurt your feelings, but it actually, it didn't taste very good. Yeah. That's, that's obviously. Right. Not. <laughs> right. And, and that's a very sim oversimplified example. But by using the word but. Right. It, it kind of destroys the whole, the, the whole quality. Of I've, the heard quality. The I've heard the term. I've heard the saying that when you say but, you yeah. essentially negate everything you've said before yeah, it. Exactly. So, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that you, that you didn't like uh, yeah. the fact that I did this. But if you hadn't of, well, then, uh -huh. then you're really not sorry because right. now you're just making an excuse for why you're even apologizing in, in the first place. Yeah. And I think that's where the pride thing kind of kicks in as well, too, is our human nature is to defend ourselves. Yep. Okay. So when we sense danger, we are going to protect ourselves. Right. And the use of but is a way of protecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's a way of justifying our actions mm -hmm. or giving a reason, a very logical reason right. why we did what we did. Because... You know, we would never do anything to hurt anybody on right. purpose, right? right? We always have a good reason right. in our in our justification anyway. So right. the problem with that is it doesn't help in the healing process. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a timing for everything. And this right. is often a question that comes up is, yeah, but what about this other thing? Mm -hmm. Or I was telling the truth. And that may be true, and but there's a proper sequence to it. Okay. And you want to be able to focus in on the other person rather than defending yourself. So mm -hmm. I tell clients all the time, attend, don't defend. Right. Attend, okay. don't defend. Don't, don't worry about yourself right in the moment and, and trying to be right, trying to justify, trying to defend yourself, protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Just focus on what you did wrong. Own right. it. Or as the young people say, period. Right. Mm. Because we often put a comma in our apology rather than a period. That is deep. I like that. Yeah. I, I, I got to just take a second and think about that because it's that goes back. I guess it's in line with like the buts. Right. If, it, yes. if you're sorry, I'm just sorry. That's it. Yeah. There, there's no need to justify, defend, explain, 
bring up anything else. If I'm truly sorry, it's just I'm sorry for you know yeah. whatever the case might be. That was my bad. And that and that's and that's it. And just just call a spade a spade. And that, that's exactly. it. Just leave it. Just leave it. Just leave it as it, it is. Right. Just own it. And so and then now the third one was making restitution. Making restitution. Yeah. And then so let's walk through how do we make restitution. What's yeah. the, what does that that's look like? A, I find that that's a very vulnerable one and a scary one for a lot of people. Okay. Um, I did a, a, a men's group mm -hmm. um, at one point, and um, we had talked about this. And the main concern, the main fear of making restitution is, what if that other person really makes me pay? Mm. So I, I, I um, give the example of you're driving on the highway, right. and you're doing 135, and a cop pulls you over. Mm -hmm. And he says, "You're." I caught you doing the speed limit. Well, officer, I didn't mean to do that. Well, right. it doesn't matter what you meant to do. Right. My my radar says that you're going 135. <laughs> right. So here's your ticket, and you right. can deal with the judge on that, right? And that is the restitution that you have to pay. Right. So when I hurt you, mm -hmm. I now owe you. Right. Okay. And so I acknowledge the fact that you have to decide for yourself right. what. I need to do to mm. make payment right. or restitution for the offense. So if I'm following you correctly, and I think that's, that's something that's very profound, is a lot of times we want to be the ones to say what our punishment's going to be. Yeah. And if we do that, we're yes. actually, we're going to choose the easiest of the punishments. Right. Right. Yeah. Whereas asking someone what it is that they, that they feel, how, so how do I, if you, you know, if I had offended you, yeah. you know, it should be something to the effect of me asking, like, how do I make this up to you? How can I prove to you that I'm sorry? Something like yes. that is what you're yes. saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kevin, you tell me what you need mm -hmm. from me. How can I make this better? Right. And, and see, there's that now there's that power dynamic that comes into play. Right. And I'm afraid that if I do that, mm -hmm. now you're going to go, okay, excellent. Right. right. You know, like the yeah. old Mr. Burns. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. him right where I want him. He owes me. Right. There's that owing element to it. And he's going to really make me pay. Right. But my experience is that most often when you put yourself in that humble position of what, uh, tell me what you need. Often that's that question in itself is very healing. That restitution, I think, is is a really key one. And when we had this conversation many months back, yeah. I think that was one of the ones that I, I never really thought about before. I'm usually pretty good at saying, OK, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I'm usually pretty good at, at avoiding the buts because I you know take full responsibility. Yeah. But like you said, you always kind of say, OK, so here's what I'm going to do. And it's like, right. but what if that's not what the person right. actually needs? Yeah, and, and here in Canada, I think we're seeing, like, you know, with the residential schools, too, to bring that. Right, up. yeah. We have a whole history, but now I think it's a very much more healing and honoring thing to say, what is it that you need from us, rather right. than us telling them what we're mm -hmm. going to do in right. order to repair. Because I guess if using that as an example, what you see is, is like, okay, you know, we realize we've done this wrong and so we're gonna we're gonna give millions of dollars yeah. to yeah. to do this but it's like maybe the millions of dollars isn't i mean yeah it could be nice it could but be. that's not necessarily what's going to make me get over yeah it right sometimes people think that money is just or, or whatever gift yeah. might be yeah. that that's going to be what's yeah. necessary yeah and often like i said oftentimes it's not what you you the offender might think is mm -hmm. necessary right to bring the healing right do you have an example? I'm going to make throw on the spot here a little bit, but like even without getting into any specifics, but thinking of like even some of the couples that you've, yeah. you've kind of worked with where there's a, a, a scenario where that's a good fit to explain sort of kind of what that restitution is. Like sometimes, you know, people want like maybe whether it be the man or the woman in the relationship yeah. um, is trying to do something, but the other person just isn't really yeah. grabbing that. I, certainly in, a, in a many affair situations. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. where there's there has been um, pain. There's been you know um, deceit and lying. Right. And and so part of the the retribution or the restitution is, mm -hmm. I am asking you just don't do it again. Right. Stop lying to me. Right. Stop continually telling me lies or not um, revealing things. I I want you just to be fully honest and tell me the whole story now rather than it coming out bits and pieces. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Okay, so then, so we've got regret, responsibility, restitution, good. and then... Genuine re repentance. And, and the repentance concept is a very, it's a very biblical concept. Right. Um, so I ask people like, what is your definition of repentance? And they're like, I don't actually know what repentance means. Right. Yeah. Except maybe they go back to their... Uh, the you know, Sunday school days. Sunday <laughs> school, or, or yeah, Catholic school. You right. Know, yeah. And try to, but um, let's, let's start off with the genuine aspect first. Okay. okay? Yeah. How do you know when somebody's genuine? You know what, just based on what we've talked about so far, it's like if I think that they're genuine, if they're not giving those excuses, they're not getting into the butts, they're, they're just simply owning it and saying, you know what, like I sincerely realize that I've offended you. Not, not so much about, well, I think I owe you an apology. It's like, no, I, I've taken a second look at this. And if they're using the, that kind of language, I might feel yeah. that they're more sincere, I guess. That yeah. would be my, okay. yeah. Okay. okay. I like to use the example also of the, um, the used car salesman. Okay. I know they get a bad rap, so it's, please, I <laughs> no hope offense. You know, no offense. It, but um, the used car salesman, they, they sell you a beautiful car. It looks great. You drive it home. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, you realize you bought a lemon right. because it's got a lot of problems to it. Um, I, I think that the only way that you can actually tell somebody's genuine mm -hmm. is when over time, their actions line up with their words. You know, I guess like you said, if, if you think of like those affair situations, yeah. right? Um, if they say that they're sorry, but yet you're still it's finding out that there's again. somebody else or it's, yeah. it's happening again, yeah. then obviously their, their um, not apology was not, was not very genuine. No, I get that 100%. Yeah. So if now, if someone is, is definitely, you know, kind of repented and, and like you said, that their actions have lined up over time, yeah. we now move to sort of the fifth element. Well, requesting forgiveness. Okay. Let's walk through that one a little bit. Yeah. So a request of forgiveness. If I hurt you, mm -hmm. I, there's this owing debtor owner um, dynamic that is taking place. Right. And so it is my responsibility, I think, anyways, to say, I acknowledge that I hurt you. Mm -hmm. Will you forgive me? Okay. But we also have to be very honoring of a process. Because if I hurt you and time is, is passed, I, you're going to need time in order to consider whether this is a really good choice or not. And we right. could even get into that discussion at some point yeah. as well, too. Yeah. Should you offer up forgiveness like right away? Okay. okay. Yeah, I know that's a big topic as well, too. Yep. Right? But the requesting of forgiveness is, I acknowledge that I've hurt you. I hope that when you're ready, you can forgive me. So, you know, tying, tying those two back together. So I, I really, you know, looking at apologies and making sure that we've got the right, I don't want to call it a formula, but there's definitely some, some practical the steps that the ingredients as you say yeah um to help us really ensure that we're doing the right things to try to apologize to people mm -hmm. we understand that on the forgiveness side when you're the person doing the apologies you need to really just ask the other person for your forgiveness and leave it with them yeah. on their own time to sort of work through that right and likewise if someone's apologizing to us we also need to take our time to sort of you know forgive forgive mm -hmm. them yeah and there's not always going to be that direct Thing happening right yeah. at that moment moment in time yeah. definitely a lot of great conversation we had today a lot for us to really think yeah. about i think there's a lot of food for thought for those watching this video um, but if there's anyone that's out there that wants to kind of reach out to you more directly how do they best reach out to you how can they find you i know you're you've got some socials maybe you want to take a time i'll put some yeah, stuff in the description so they but, can find mm. me kj copeland rp okay so on instagram that's also on TikTok. So yeah. I'm, I'm venturing into the TikTok world with the help of my teenage daughters. <laughs> um, as well, um, I do a Facebook page called uh, Together One for Couples. Yeah. And uh, I do have a website as well, too. Okay. So I'll, we can post that there. Yeah. And if people want to reach out to me and connect, I'm all for it. I'd love to love to work with them. Great. Always a, an amazing time talking with you. You've got a lot of information, a lot of insight. And uh, I think there's a lot for our viewers to really take, a, take in um, yeah. on this one. So until we, we have another opportunity to talk a bit more specifically, I think we've given enough general information for today. 
Um, but if there's anyone that's watching this video that has a very specific incident or a situation in their life that they want um, maybe a more direct answer to, they can either reach out to you directly or they Absolutely, can feel free yeah. to put it in, in the comments and, um, and we yeah. can you know, follow up and do another video sure. to answer that much more specifically. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that there's going to be some good questions and maybe, yeah, that's yeah. fodder for another conversation down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you again for opening up your house to, to me to do this. For over and and, and, and letting really... me be a part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So until next time, thank you so much, Kevin, for, for all your, your hospitality. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Absolutely. All right. Take care, man.